1930 marked a sea change in India's struggle for independence from its British colonial overlords, and a wave of resistance was generated by as simple a commodity as salt. The root of the issue lay in the monopoly of the production and sale of salt that Britain had granted itself in India, and the Mahatma Gandhi made this act of injustice the target of his unique form of activism. Starting off with 78 followers from his base at the Sabarmati Ashram, he led a march of just less than 400 kilometers to the coastal village of Dandi, gathering support along the way. On reaching the beach, he boiled seawater to produce salt, and use of this act of defiance spread across India, sparking widespread non-violent protests. The mass marches and the violent response of the British Raj drew criticism from foreign governments, including that of the USA, and eventually the salt tax was repealed. In 2005, the Great Salt March was re-enacted for the first time in India and South Africa, and it is now an annual event in Durban. We take salt for granted. It's difficult to imagine that less than a century ago, ordinary Indians had to pay tax to the British Raj to buy something as basic as salt, and the poorest of the poor were affected the most. The Mahatma led a protest against that. This courageous act of non-violence resistance is being commemorated right here in Durban. This was the 14th time that the Salt March was commemorated in Durban, and as always, the event was preceded by interfaith prayers. Thank you everybody, it's only appropriate that we commence with prayer as we usually do. Let us pray, God of all peoples, for all those who have gathered here today, we celebrate this year the 100th birthdays of two great South Africans, Nelson Mandela and Albertina Sisulu two outstanding examples of Ubuntu and social cohesion. Amen. We are so blessed in South Africa with great leaders that we have to really cherish the memory of these people. How does it feel to have your grandfather's courage and determination honoured in such a way? I think it's the least we can do. Gandhiji left such a strong legacy for the world and what we are doing today is to take a message to the world that until all the people are in the world have access to basic necessities of life can live together in peace and harmony we can't say that we are truly liberated today we have gathered here to remind ourselves and to the youngsters who are among us that freedom and equality anywhere is very hard fought thing. You have to fight very hard for it. In your view, what is the significance of the Salt March being commemorated in South Africa? In South Africa, the fact that we are able to celebrate it, we are able to have so many people here who walked for the Salt March, I think it's a, not only a great tribute to the contribution of Gandhiji and the freedom struggle, but also says a lot about the people who, are, who came here in such large number to commemorate the Salt March and I hope it continues for all time to come. The South African Police Services Band played the national anthem before the official opening of the event. Today we are all here to participate in an event that enables us to make a commitment to non-violence, transformation, nation building and Ubuntu in our society at large. What is the main aim of the Salt Park? promote peace, non-violence, Ubuntu. Also, 14 years ago was the 50th anniversary of Chief Albert Tutuli getting the Nobel Peace Prize, so we decided to celebrate both events. This year's march commemorates not only the original event, but also two important centenaries in South Africa. Can you tell me the background behind it? We're celebrating the 100 years of Mandela and 100 years of Albertina Susulu, both of them stalwarts in their own rights in getting freedom for the country peacefully and non-violently. The marches then set off on the 4.7 kilometer route from the amphitheater along the promenade to Ushaka Marine World and back. With the SAPS band leading the way, participants could walk at their own pace, and racing was the last thing on anyone's mind. The aim and object was to commemorate the spirit and message of the Mahatma, Madiba, and Albertina Sisulu. The Mahatma's march was also called the Salt Satyagraha, a concept that Gandhiji developed during his time in South Africa. 
Why did you decide to join today's event? We need to come and be a part of it so that we can encourage our learners to follow suit. What is your message for this year's event? I think the event is where so many people come, you know, you see the social cohesion and you know, to feed uh, people from different races and different cultures and different organizations. It's about spreading the Gandhian principles of truth, non-violence, democracy, a society free of abuse, and it's in that context that we all join in. When history is kept in the covers of a book, it is dry and lifeless. Today's march has brought back the spirit and the story of the Mahatma. And I'm sure everybody who has been a part of today's march has got a new commitment to Ubuntu and Satyagraha. Satyagraha speaks truth to power through non-violence and the Salt March helps keep the message alive in today's world.